All right. Looks like folks are coming in. We're just going to wait a few minutes to let people join and we will get started soon. Confirm that my screen is visible or are we just looking at the speakers right now? Yes, thank you. All right, got lots of people joining. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. We're just waiting a couple more minutes. We'll wait until a few minutes after the hour to get us started. Thanks for being here. If you're just coming in, we're waiting a couple of minutes to let people file into the Zoom, and then we'll get started with this HDSA research webinar. Thank you for being here, everybody. Uh, we've still got some people joining, but it's a couple minutes after the hour, so I'm going to get us started. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this HDSA research webinar. I am Dr. Leora Fox. I'm the Assistant Director of Research and Patient Engagement at HDSA. I'm joined also by my colleague, Kelly Andrew, Coordinator of Research and Mission Programs. And today we're going to be hearing from Neuroocrine Biosciences Incorporated, which has recently gotten FDA approval for a new treatment for Korea, the movements associated with HD. And uh, we plan this webinar with Neuroocrine so that you could hear a bit more about it and have the opportunity to have some of your questions answered about this new treatment. I do want to note that today's Q&A is a bit different from typical HDSA webinars. So we had asked that registrants submit questions last month. We got about a hundred of them. So we're gonna focus on some of those frequently asked questions today, but you can always reach out to HDSA if you have questions about all things research, about follow-up for this webinar, we can help to follow up with the speakers as needed if you have outstanding questions. So you can still use the chat function to enter questions or comments that the speakers in HDSA will be able to see. Uh, so it's not an open chat with everybody um, and the speakers won't directly be addressing questions from the chat today. They're going to answer ones that were pre-submitted. So I will hand it over to Kelly for some more info. Awesome. Thanks, Leora. Um, a reminder to everyone, this webinar is being recorded. Um, this recording will be available to you all a few weeks from now. Um, you can access that as well as any of HDSA's past research webinars um, from HDSA's website. That URL is available for you on the screen. You can also access these webinars at HDSA's YouTube channel, which you can find on HDSA's main website as well. Uh, in addition to webinars, HDSA has many research education resources and support services available to you. Um, this includes our research blog that's published every Thursday, um, and you can find that on our website at hdsa.org slash blog. That kind of breaks down latest updates in HD research news. Um, HDSA also has a variety of programs and services available through our website. This includes uh, support groups, educational resources, all kinds of things, and you can find those services or support them at the URLs available on your screen. Um, the last one I wanna hit is if you are interested in participating in HD research, um, an awesome research resource that HDSA has for you is HD Trial Finder. That is a clinical trials matching platform that's available from our website or at hdtrialfinder.org. Um, additionally, if you're interested in participating in HD research, but not quite sure where to start, uh, a very cool way you can make your voice heard is through online surveys. Those are things that you can do from home or from wherever you have access to the internet. Uh, and HDSA works with researchers all over the world to find surveys and make them available to you. You can find those at hdsa.org slash surveys. Uh, back to you, Leora. Thank you, Kelly. 
So I'm very pleased now to be able to introduce our three speakers today. Dr. Grace Liang is the Vice President of Clinical Development at Neurocrine Biosciences. She's a neurologist who brings many years of experience caring for people with movement disorders to her work developing treatments at Neurocrine. Jason Kaplan is the Executive Director of Market Access at Neurocrine Biosciences. And in HDSA's partnership with Neurocrine, he's been extremely knowledgeable and has helped to provide clarity around their plans for helping doctors and patients learn more about accessing their newly FDA-approved drugs. Dr. Aaron Furstimming is the Director of the HDSA Center of Excellence at UT Health Sciences Center at Houston McGovern Medical School. She's also a principal investigator with the Huntington Study Group and was a leader of the Connect HD trial that led to this drug approval. She is a knowledgeable and compassionate doctor to many families with HD. So we've got a fantastic lineup today, and I am going to hand it over to our speakers to share their slides and get us started. Great. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. Uh, my name again is Grace Liang and I'm from Neurocrine Biosciences. It's a pleasure to be able to join you and share some important information, which I hope will be helpful in helping you to understand more about our new treatment for Huntington's disease, Korea, approved this year in Greza, and to give you important information about its safety and efficacy and how it could be used. go through the information and we'll have time to answer questions that were submitted to the webinar at the end of the presentation. Next slide. Okay. So um, it's wonderful to be able to share with you uh, this information about Ingresa, which is now approved for the treatment of Korea associated with Huntington's disease in adults. And as we get into the details about the use of Ingresa, I'd like to share with you some important safety information that's good for you to consider as, as you think about this treatment and discuss it with your healthcare provider. So Ingresa is a VMAT2 inhibitor, which is a group of medications that have been approved for use of treatment of chorea in Huntington's disease. And these medicines uh, can uh, cause some serious side effects in some people with Huntington's disease, which we know may be associated with increased risk of depression, suicidal thoughts, or suicidal actions. So uh, with these medicines, it's important to talk to your healthcare provider or your doctor if you have any of these kinds of symptoms of depression, changes in mood or behavior or feelings, and to consider the safety profile of the medication, which you can find more information about on ingresa.com or in the uh, prescribing information. We'll talk more about this throughout the presentation. Next slide. So first off, I'd like to share a little bit about what makes Ingresa different as one of the FDA-approved drugs for treatment of Korean Huntington's disease. Well, Ingresa is the only treatment, the only medication that's been approved that has been proven to reduce HD Korea that's always taken as one capsule once daily uh, throughout all of the treatment doses. And like other medications used to treat HD chorea, Ingresa acts specifically at a particular protein called VMAT2. And it is very uh, selective in how it targets that protein, which we'll explain a little bit more. I'll explain a little bit what we know about what contributes to chorea in Huntington's disease. Huntington's disease is a disease of the brain, and uh, one of the chemicals in the brain, dopamine, is important in signaling and controlling movement. In Huntington's to Korea, dopamine uh, levels seem to be altered, which may contribute to the excess or involuntary movements, which are the symptoms of Korea that can be quite bothersome. And so VMAT2 is one of those proteins in the brain that helps to control the release of dopamine in the brain that uh, manages the signaling levels. And by inhibiting it, 
in Greza reduces the levels of dopamine and therefore is thought to reduce uh, the impact or the uh, levels of the movements like Korea. Okay, next slide. Now, while Ingresa has been approved just this year for the treatment of Huntington's disease, Korea, it's been around for quite a long time and has a long history of use. It's already been approved for more than five years as a treatment for another movement disorder uh, that also causes involuntary movements called tardive dyskinesia. And to date, it's been prescribed to over 57,000 patients here in the U.S. And so there's quite a lot of experience with its use and its efficacy and safety. However, specifically for its use in treating Huntington's disease patients, uh, we conducted two specific clinical trials, which we called Connect HD and Connect HD2, to look again at the efficacy in reducing chorea, as well as the safety and tolerability and other aspects of its use in Huntington's disease. Next slide. So I'd like to talk a little bit about how Ingresa is used. Again, uh, it's formulated as one capsule that can be taken once daily throughout uh, all of the ways that it is prescribed. And it started at a 40 milligram dose, which is taken for two weeks. Uh, all of the doses of Ingresa, 40, 60, and 80 milligrams are effective doses, and therefore, based on a patient's particular symptoms and needs, uh, they and their physician can decide whether the initial dose is effective and, uh, and uh, should be continued, or there are options to increase it uh, to 60 or 80 milligrams. In the study, the 80 milligram dose was the most effective dose, but again, this should be discussed between the patient and their healthcare provider, what's most appropriate for them. Importantly, because it's just taken as one capsule once daily, there aren't really complex dose adjustments required to get to an effective dose. And also, it's convenient in that it can be taken any time of day with or without food. Another important aspect is it can be added to most stable medication regimens, and so there doesn't have to be a lot of adjustment of other medications in order to start in Greza. Next slide. This is some additional important safety information that's also important to consider and discuss with physicians. So uh, there have been some serious side effects that have been reported in patients taking Ingresa. One of these is called angioedema, which is an allergic reaction that can cause sudden swelling uh, or difficulty breathing. Uh, sometimes uh, it's important to note uh, if uh, there are heart rhythm problems. Uh, this can be uh, associated with Ingresa with a symptom called a QT prolongation. And so any symptoms related to that should be discussed immediately with the healthcare provider. Also, there's a very rare, but sometimes fatal condition called neuroleptic malignant syndrome. And occasionally Parkinson-like abnormal movements have also been reported. There's more details about this in the label, in the safety information there, uh, but you should consider this and discuss this with your healthcare provider if you have any of these symptoms or concerns. Next slide. Importantly, before deciding or as you're taking the medication, it's always good to talk to your healthcare provider about all of your medical conditions, if they're related to Huntington's disease or any other healthcare conditions you might have, as well as any medications you're taking, including prescription over-the-counter medications to make sure it's compatible with the medication. Next slide. I'll turn it over now to Dr. First Dimming to talk to you about the results of the study. Thank you, Grace. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm really excited to speak to you today just briefly about the Connect HD clinical trial results. So, Connect, Connect HD was a collaboration between the Huntington Study Group and Neurocrine Biosciences, and I was honored to serve as the HSG or Huntington Study Group principal investigator for Connect HD. Before I talk to you about the trial results, 
I really want to take a moment to thank all of the individuals that participated in Connect HD and that continue to participate in the open label uh, study that's ongoing, Connect HD 2. Um, we clearly could not have done it without all the individuals that participated, and we're so grateful. Um, believe it or not, the trial started long, long ago, back in November of 2019. Um, and, and so the successful completion of the Connect HD trial, um, uh, despite a pandemic, um, it was a long trial. Um, the, this was the, the completion of the trial was yet another example of the resilience and the dedication of the amazing HD community. So for even for those that didn't participate in the trial, we're so grateful for those that supported us um, and cheered us along the way. Uh, so thank you um, to everyone. So, um, and I'd also like to thank HDSA for giving us the opportunity to share these results with you. So I think we can advance to the next slide. We'll talk about the, the trial itself and, and then just briefly about the trial results. So we've mentioned Connect HD a few times. What was what what is Connect, Connect HD all about? What was this study all about? So Connect HD was a clinical trial that evaluated, evaluated the safety and tolerability and effectiveness of Ingresa or otherwise known as valbenazine, in addressing Huntington's related chorea. As you've already heard from Grace, we, we all know chorea. It's the most common involuntary movement that individuals with adults, especially with Huntington's disease, experience. So we measure the severity of chorea using something called the total maximal uh, chorea score. And the total maximal chorea score evaluates the severity of chorea in seven different body regions. So the face, the mouth um, region, the trunk, and each limb independently. Um, and this helps us in, in determining how severe the chorea is and helps us with uh, objectively measuring uh, the chorea. So the primary outcome of the Connect HD study was the change in the TMC or the total maximal chorea score from the beginning of the study to the end of the 12 week dosing period comparing those that took Ingresa versus those that took placebo. We enrolled 128 adults with Huntington's related chorea. 64 of those individuals were randomly selected to take Ingresa and 64 were randomly selected to take placebo, which as you know, is a, is a sugar pill with no active drug in it. And so what did we find? Well, um, next slide, please. So good news. We found that, in fact, we met our primary endpoint. Uh, we found that uh, Huntington's related chorea was statistically significantly improved in those taking uh, Ingresa at the end of the 12 week study when compared to those taking placebo. And this was measured, like I said, using the TMC or the total maximal chorea score. In fact, in a post hoc analysis, we found that approximately 80% of participants began to experience improvement. Um, in their chorea as soon as two weeks after starting in Greza at the 40 milligram dose. These individuals had at least a one point reduction in their TMC score at two weeks uh, versus before they, they started the study drug. So if we can move to the next slide, please. You'll see here that at the conclusion of the study, those taking in Greza showed a three time greater improvement in chorea versus those taking placebo as measured again by the TMC. At week 12, we saw that 57% of individuals um, taking valbenazine or Ingresa experienced clinically, a clinically meaningful improvement, which is really important. Next slide, please. Most individuals uh, that completed the trial actually completed, excuse me, most individuals that enrolled in the trial actually completed the trial. And this is this is also really important because it's it's hard to participate in a trial. It requires several different visits. It requires taking a, a either the study drug or placebo. So we're asking a lot of individuals that participate in clinical trials. Um, so the majority of individuals that did enroll ended up completing the trial, as I mentioned. Most individuals were actually able to stay on the highest dose of albenazine, which was 80 milligrams. Um, and so most participants were on 80 milligrams at the conclusion of the study. Among those individuals that did not tolerate 80 milligrams, most dropped down to a lower dose, but they stayed in the study. The number of individuals who left the trial early 
or similar uh, to those um, in, in both groups. So in those taking in Greza, 7.8% um, were left the trial prematurely. And in those taking placebo, we had 6.3% uh, um, in, in total that left the trial. So next slide, please. So we are thrilled about the results of the Connect HD trial, which ultimately, as you've heard already, uh, led to the FDA approval of uh, valbenazine or Ingresa to treat uh, adults with Huntington's related chorea. We celebrate that approval. We celebrate the fact that we have uh, another drug available for our patients and families that are struggling with chorea. But we do need to acknowledge that all medications have potential side effects, as you've already heard from Grace. There's, um, and and it's, it's, it's really, um, it, it's imperative that we're aware of uh, the potential side effects. So for detailed information about all of the potential side effects um, that you could experience if you're taking Ingresa, I would urge you to go to ingresa.com. I do want to mention the most common side effects that we saw in Connect HD. Um, so those were sleepiness, um, allergic itching, rash, and trouble falling asleep or staying asleep. These were not the only uh, side effects that individuals experienced, but these were the more common side effects. You've also heard already um, from Grace about the boxed warning uh, surrounding Ingresa. Um, so thank you again to those that participated in the trial um, and that ultimately led to the approval of Ingresa for Huntington's related chorea. So now I'd, I'd like to pass um, the, the presentation along so that you can hear more um, about access and, and really how the availability of, of Ingresa. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, so again, my name is Jason Kaplan. I'm the Executive Director of Market Access at Neurochrome Biosciences. And since titles don't mean a whole lot to others outside of our organization, what that means is I'm responsible for working with health insurance plans and pharmacies to make sure that our medicine is available to all of you. Um, and I'm super happy to be here serving this community. It's, it's really my passion to do just that, to work with those folks and try and find ways to help you all get on and stay on therapy. Um, in fact, when we build programs at Neurocrine, it's really our focus to start with the patients and their care, care team in mind and really build these programs around you all to make sure that you're able to get our therapies and stay on them. So very happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Um, Ingresa is available for prescription by doctors and allied health professionals. Um, and I think it's really important that most people pay less than $10 for Ingresa. Um, patients with commercial insurance, in fact, may be eligible to pay nothing in a lot of cases. And for those folks who don't have insurance uh, or are underinsured or their insurance won't cover Ingresa, we have a very robust patient assistance program available. And so our goal at the end of the day is that any patient who's prescribed Ingresa as a choice between their physician and, and themselves uh, have access to Ingresa. Um, I also wanna just note on this slide that we have a program called the Embrace Support Program. There's two ways to get to that. The first one is by visiting embracesupportprogram.com slash Ingresa patient. And the second is to just call 184-Ingresa. Uh, uh, that's available from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time, Monday through Friday. Uh, and that has all kinds of resources for patients, caregivers, uh, and there's another section of the Embrace Support Program for physicians. And in that, there are things that help with filing prescriptions, uh, so paperwork and the like. There's financial assistance programs within that um, and product support. And so just wanna be uh, really clear that this is a great program. I highly recommend going and, and checking it out um, with the goal of really helping to make sure that you're able to gain access to, to the prescription that you and your doctor decided uh, that you should be on. Go to the next slide. Ingress is currently available in the United States. And there's a couple of choices that happen when we choose our pharmacies. One is you can go really broad, which lets you go to a local pharmacy and pick up your prescription. Um, in rare disease, that's really difficult. And since there aren't that many of you guys in the world uh, with Huntington's Korea, if you open it up really broadly, then most pharmacies actually never um, dispense a prescription. And what that means is most patients who walk into a pharmacy, it will be their first interaction with a Huntington's patient filling a prescription. And so we've taken a little bit of a different approach. And that is that we uh, focus on a few select pharmacies that are really good at the process. 
And so the pharmacies that we've chosen are Amber Pharmacy, Orsini, and Panther. It is highly likely that most of you on this call have never heard of any of those unless you are currently getting your prescriptions from them now. Um, but they're small, a little bit more boutique-y, and uh, really are focused on, on patients and process. And so we felt like they were very good options to make sure that they help uh, you all with the, the process. And the other two are a little bit more household names. So Alliance RX, which you might not know, uh, but they're owned by Walgreens. And most folks know who Walgreens are. Um, and then uh, CVS Specialty, uh, which is the specialty arm of the retail chain CVS Pharmacy. Uh, and then the last group, which is maybe a little bit less uh, relevant to you all, is Genoa Healthcare. And they're a group of uh, retail pharmacies that are typically associated with um, mental health providers in the community. Uh, and so those are the pharmacies that we work with. And again, the reason that we've kind of stayed very small is these are a group of folks who are really committed to getting folks on therapy, started on therapy, who have decided to make uh, that move with their physician. So if we go to the next slide, um, I'm very fortunate to be in the position to just be able to say thank you to all of you for giving us this time. We're really proud to provide Ingreza as a new treatment option for those living with the effects of Huntington's chorea. And while there isn't a cure or a treatment that delays the progression of Huntington's disease, it's really our hope that at the end of the day that having another product available like Ingreza helps to raise awareness and continue the conversations between you all and your physicians about impacting daily activities. If you require more information, you can certainly find out more information about Ingreza by visiting our website at www.ingreza.com. And uh, again, just want to thank the community uh, and HDSA for having us. I'm going to turn things over to Leora and Kelly for the Q&A session. Thank you so much, Jason. And thanks very much to all our speakers for this very clear presentation on Ingreza and on the data that led to its FDA approval. I will remind everyone that you are uh, you're welcome to put questions and comments in the chat, but today the speakers are going to answer some questions that were submitted prior to the webinar. So if your question today is not addressed, you're welcome to reach out to any of the staff at HDSA individually or to webinar at hdsa.org, and we're happy to help with follow-up. But today we thought we would start with some uh, pre-submitted questions about cost and access. Um, we got quite a few of these from the community. I know that uh, Jason's a great resource for that. We'll direct these to him. Um, some of these did get addressed during the presentation, but maybe we can hear a little bit more and make sure the message is really clear. So um, Jason, the first question is about insurance. So are you able to talk more about how Ingreza is covered, um, whether it's covered by Medicare and Medicaid, and maybe what other kinds of support there might be to get access? Absolutely. So um... Our insurance coverage for Ingresa is actually quite good, and the majority of prescriptions that come in get approved by the health plans. Um, and in fact, about eight out of ten prescriptions that come in do, in fact, get improved, uh, approved. And for those that don't, I already mentioned we have a really robust patient um, support program, uh, and through our patient assistance portion of that, um, we're able to cover most of the other folks who were not able to gain coverage. Um, the Embrace Support Program is always available to help those folks who need a little bit of extra help with navigating the fulfillment process. Um, I already mentioned that eligible commercial patients may pay as little as zero dollars out of pocket. And even for those folks on Medicare and Medicaid, because most patients with Huntington's disease who have Medicare are duly eligible, um, even those Medicare and Medicaid patients often pay under $10 for their prescriptions. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. Uh, a related question. Can you talk a little bit more about what the cost of Ingresa would be for a typical patient? Yeah, it's usually under $10. So uh, for about 80% of our patients, that's the case. And we're really um, proud of that fact. We really don't want costs to stand in between uh, a physician and patient's choice to go on Ingresa. Great. We also had uh, a lot of folks ask about when Ingreza will be available or how they might be able to get a prescription for it. Sure. Um, Ingreza is currently available nationwide in the United States through that select network of specialty pharmacies that I shared with you earlier. 
it's important to speak to your health care provider to determine if treatment with Ingresa is right for each individual patient. Um, and, and so if it is, then a prescription would be generated and we would make it available uh, through those pharmacies that we talked about earlier. Uh, so HDSA primarily serves people in the United States, and we know that Ingresa is approved by the FDA in the U.S., but we also had several people from outside the country reach out about whether Ingresa would be available in other places. Can you speak to that a little bit? Sure. Uh, Ingresa is currently available for treatment of Korea associated with Huntington's disease in the United States, as you said. It's also been available in the U.S. since 2017 for the treatment of tardive dyskinesia, another movement disorder. Um, and while we have no immediate plans to commercialize Ingresa for Korea associated with Huntington's disease outside of the United States, we always continue to keep the community updated on any changes to that that, that are made. Thanks. Um, so the next set of questions are uh, more on the medical side. So I'm going to turn to Grace and Erin for this. I will start with one that um, a lot of people asked about. So we're aware that there are two other treatments approved in the USA for Korea associated with HD, uh, Osteto and Xenazine. And um, we've gotten a lot of questions about the difference between Ingresa and these other treatments. So could you maybe speak to that, Grace? Sure. And thanks for the question. It's an important one to understand as you're talking about treatment options with your healthcare providers, that Ingresa offers the only treatment for Huntington's disease Korea. That's always a one capsule, once daily uh, way of dosing. And as we said, um, there are three effective dosing options. And we know that for patients and their caregivers who are involved in their care, that convenience and having a simple medication regimen is really important. So to be able to just take uh, the capsule once a day and then at any time of day or with or without food can help to provide some of that flexibility and adapt to your lifestyle. So. Uh, that's an important difference between how the other medications are dosed. Uh, every medication has its different profile. So talk to your doctor uh, about what might be the best option for you. Thank you. Um, we have also had several people ask about switching from other Korea medications to Ingresa. Um, things like whether it makes sense to do that, how they would go about doing that. Erin, um, is that something you can talk about for us? Sure, absolutely. Uh, great question. Thank you for all these uh, really important questions. Um, so we don't yet we don't have any head-to-head -head trials comparing uh, one VMAT two inhibitor to another. For example, comparing Osteto to um, to Ingresa. So it's really important. It, and as a result, we don't have um, absolute guidance on on how to do that that I can give you right now. We really um, would urge you to speak with your um, your healthcare provider, whether that's your neurologist um, or primary care doc. Um, if you're interested in switching, um, kind of have that conversation um, and, and then determine whether or not it's, that's going to be a good fit for you. And if yes, then how do, we, how do you do it? Um, because everyone is different in the way that they um, uh, are, uh, uh, respond to medications and tolerate medications. So you really need to have a conversation, like I said, with your, um, with your physician. Um, it is important that you, you know, wait and talk to your physician first before you stop your current medication, um, just, just to make sure that you um, have that discussion, you're aware of the risk benefit ratio between any, um, uh, you know, really from any medication that you're taking in between uh, medications. But great question, um, just, just speak to your physician and, and talk through um, how you might do that. Thank you. Thanks, Erin. Can you also talk a little bit more about how Ingresa is taken? Yeah, so um, in, Ingresa, as, as Grace mentioned, is, is available in a capsule. Um, it's, it's taken orally. It can be taken with or without food, which is, which is nice. Um, and it can be taken in the morning or the evening, um, whichever you prefer. Um, it's available in, in three different doses. So 40 milligram, 60 milligram, and 80 milligram capsules. Um, and so it's, again, just uh, really important that, you know, if you're interested in, in um, taking Ingresa, that you um, speak to your healthcare provider um, and, and he or she will um, talk you through uh, getting, getting the medication started um, and kind of, uh, kind of brainstorm with you as to when, when the best time might be to take it. 
Um, but it is um, it is available, like I said, in three different doses. So so we usually, as a general rule, in the land of neurology, start low, go slow. Um, we, we start at the lowest dose, see how folks uh, tolerate the medication, and then increase as needed uh, based on tolerability and effectiveness. Great, thank you. Um, we also had some questions about when Ingrazza should be prescribed. So is this medication available to any or people at any stage of Huntington's disease? Sure, I can start there. And um, it's important that um, people know uh, Huntington's disease has many different symptoms that affect people differently. So Ingreza is indicated specifically for treating the chorea symptoms in Huntington's disease, but chorea can also appear in different ways and uh, throughout different stages of Huntington. So um, if it is something that's noticeable or uh, that is impacting you, then it's important to talk to your healthcare provider about those symptoms and to determine if um, your treatment goals and the needs that you have um, when uh, Ingreza would be appropriate to start there. So um, there's no specific stage at which it's indicated. It's really, again, based on an individual's needs. Thank you, Grace. Another question we got from a couple of people um, who you know, may have a loved one with juvenile HD, for example, is whether Ingreza uh, can be used in children. Well, that's an important question. Um, so uh, the, um, the indication for Ingreza use is specifically for adults with Huntington's disease, Korea. It's not known if it's safe to take in children with Huntington's. Thank you for that. Um, this is another safety comparison question. Uh, we get a lot of questions, or got a lot of questions about the side effects of Ingreza versus Osteto and Xenazine, um, whether there are different warnings about depression and things like that. Um, if you could speak to that a little bit, that would be great. I might direct Maybe this one to Aaron. One for Aaron yeah. yeah, thank you. I have to unmute myself. Um, okay, sorry. Um, yes, so can you, sorry, can you repeat the question? Of course. Um, this question is about the safety comparison of Ingreza okay. versus other Korea medications like Aceto and Xenazine, uh, yes, specifically related to depression. Yeah, thank you. So as I mentioned previously, there are no head-to-head -head trials uh, between Ingreza, Osteto, um, or uh, Xenazine. Um, but um, we, we do know that there, as, as we mentioned earlier, there is a class uh, warning, a boxed warning. Um, all three of these medications, Ingreza, Osteto, and Xenazine, are VMAT2 inhibitors. They work in a similar way, um, and they're, the boxed warning uh, surrounds the possibility of increasing depression and uh, or increasing suicidal thoughts and behaviors, which unfortunately we know are more common in HD than the general population. Um, I uh, just briefly talked through the Connect HD study results um, and mentioned the most common side effects uh, that we um, uh, that that uh, participants experienced that we saw in the trial, um, and those were sleepiness, allergic itching, rash, and trouble falling asleep and staying asleep. Um, so the the side effects um, can be similar between between the medications, but there are also differences, and um, and so again, it's it's really Sorry, I sound like a broken record, but important to talk uh, talk through the potential risks um, and and potential side effects, really of any medication when you're visiting with your physician, um, so that you um, you and your family know um, which which side effects to sort of keep an eye out uh, for and um, and to determine whether or not Ingreza or or any of the VMAT two inhibitors are a good fit for you. Thanks so much, Erin, and thank you to all of our speakers. We had decided upon a, a set of questions today based on all the, the frequently asked questions that we got um, from folks submitting those prior to the webinar. So I just want to repeat again that if you feel that you have other questions about Ingreza, about uh, neurocrine, please do reach out to HDSA at webinar at hdsa.org or to any of us, and we can help with with that kind of follow-up and direct you to more information as needed. Um, so now I just want to thank all of our speakers again for making this 
very clear and uh, for helping us get this information about this newly approved drug out to the community. So we'll leave it there and uh, we hope to see you again for, for more HDSA webinars. So thank you everyone and have a great weekend. Thank you everyone. Thank Bye. you so much.